Good morning, dear friends. And I am happy that we are together again this morning. And I pray that today's meditation will give you the needed strength and counsel. In the last days, ungodliness will multiply. This time is the last moment of the last days. The Bible warns us that the believers must be prepared to face an overwhelming floods of ungodliness. Apostle Paul, writing to his faithful son in the faith, prophesies that the devil will cause great destruction on the family. Read 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. I would like you to read this after this meditation before you forget. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. How accurately the apostle had prof prophetically wrote the characteristics of the generation of this present time. And I am sure as you read this passage, you will be marveled at the accuracy of this prophecy. God has already given us the warning. And when we see the fulfillment of this prophecy around us, and in a way, we are a privileged people. We are living at a time when we are seeing many of these prophecies in the Bible concerning the end of the last, time, last, last days how accurate the Bible is and how the Bible is a living book for those who believe. Children will be disobedient to parents. Men and women will be without love, without any affection. That means no family values, no affection, or without any feeling of a natural tenderness or love. This kind of nature is displayed by a mother who, who rejects and forsakes her own children. And a father leaving his house without any concern or love for his wife or children. How sad a situation that we see. Very often it comes in the newspapers and uh, in other, other medias. And children neglecting their parents without caring for them. And then we see men and women will become lovers of, uh, of, of, uh, of pleasures of this world and money of this world. Parenthood or rearing of children and uh, make sacrifices to bring up uh, these children are not considered to be a worthy or dignified task. Because in the same passage in uh, 1 Timothy, verses 2 to 4, you read this exactly the same thing. Such love and affection for one's own family will be replaced by selfishness and brutality and abandoning of children? I ask this question to every Christian parent. Do you want to save your family in these difficult times of the last days? Do you want to protect them and save them from the corruption of this world and the corrupt values of the society in which they live? Is it your desire to save your children from being polluted by the society's activities? Do you want to shield them, safely bring them to the destiny God has set for them. Remember, 
our true citizenship is not in this world. Our citizenship is in heaven. From where we are expecting our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to come for his redeemed church. And you read John's Gospel chapter 21 verses 15 to 17. And Acts 20 verses 28 to 30. You read these passages. Again, I request you to read these passages before you forget it. As you will see it on your screen. Separate them from the world and worldly ways and refuse the ungodly influence your children will face because they are living in, in, in a world which has no genuine love or concern and they try to influence Children who are from good families like yours. And I encourage you, dear parents, never allow your children to be influenced by the people of the society in which they live. The school where they go, and the colleges where they study, and the place of their works. And it has to be done with great prayer and burden for your family. It is your res responsibility. And I pray that you shall not neglect your God-given responsibility to be a priest and a prophet besides being the king. And you will fulfill the ministries of this prophet and priest. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 will give you the guideline as to what is the practical thing to do. Here the apostle Paul calls on the believers. Dear brethren, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And thus you may discern that which is good, pleasing, perfect will of God. Why the body is so important? The people of this world say your body is nothing. And uh, religions will say body is nothing. It is evil, so it must be destroyed. No. No. Once you are a Christian, you are a born again child of God, your body becomes more important to you than before you knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Why? Once you are saved by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are cleansed and Jesus comes to live within you. Your body becomes the temple of God. And Apostle Paul in another passage says, Don't you know, brothers, that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit in which the Spirit of God lives? And another place he says, Don't you know that your bodies are the temple of Jesus Christ in which God lives? And dear brothers and sisters who are listening to me, your body is so important to God because by dwelling within your body, your body, now what is the body's function? Body is the expression of all that you want to do and, and everything. You know, it is through body that you express us and manifest your actions. And so when God lives within you, remember, it should be God's nature and his character that must be displayed through your body. And therefore, every member of your body, your hands and your eyes, your ears and your legs, every member of your body becomes the member 
of Jesus Christ. And that's why your hand must be stretched out to touch the sick and the weak. And your eyes must see the needs around you as Jesus saw. Your ears must be open to the cries and prayers of, of a people who are helpless. And therefore, as Jesus moved among the people with compassion, you and I also had to move among our people with great love and compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what Jesus expects of us, we must do it with our body. That others may be blessed. And therefore this, as I conclude this meditation, I say this, that you accept God's plan for the family. Again, Ephesians chapter 21 verse, uh, chapter 5 verses 21 to 25. You read God's plan for the family. And to put this passage into practice in your family life. And you will then experience God's presence and love and approval. Parents must follow Joshua in his determination and decision as he announced in Joshua chapter 24 verses 14 and 15. He is calling on the people of Israel. You choose today whom you will serve. If Baal is God for you, then serve him. If not, if Jehovah God is the true one living God, then serve him. As for me, I choose to serve God Almighty, Jehovah God, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I choose to serve him with my family. That's what he said. I and my family will serve Jehovah God. And who decided it? Joshua as the head of the family. And your fathers, you as the head of the family, it is your choice. You decide on behalf of your family as well. Your children, let them know whom you serve. And the blessings and the joy and the love and peace of God whom you serve, let your children experience it and enjoy it and see it in you and be attracted to this life. This is wisdom. And may the Lord bless you to be an example to other family members. And it is your responsibility. Fulfill it. For God's glory and he has given you the Holy Spirit to help you. And the word of God to guide you. And his own presence to encourage you and strengthen you. God bless you. Father in heaven. I thank you for everyone who listened to this meditation. They need you. They need your blessing, your presence, your anointing, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. They cannot make it by themselves, but with you, they can do all things. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. As you live your life today, have a wonderful good day and enjoy God's presence and God's provision. Amen.